welcome to the 2023 Winter Classic Student Cluster Competition Studio Update Show. Now, here are your hosts, Dan Olds and Addison Snell. Hello, I'm Dan Olds, and this is the 2023 Winter Classic Invitational Student Cluster Competition Studio Update Show. And we've got a very special show ahead of you. But first, my broadcast partner, Addison Snell, is still out on assignment. So I'll be handling this one solo. We have the mentor team from NASA with us. The students just completed the NASA module uh, successfully. And we're going to talk a little bit about it with uh, our, our mentors. And let's go ahead and start with you, Steve. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I am Steve Heaston. Um, originally, last time we had this competition, I was in the APP group helping much like Sherry was doing. I have since moved to the cloud team now at NAS. Um, I did not directly do much involved in the setting up of the cloud environment that we gave the students. Um, I was mostly watching as they were running and answering questions after the fact. Okay, great, great. Uh, Andy, how about you? Yeah, uh, Andrew Michaelis. Uh, I work on the cloud team here at the Ames Research Center. Um, my involvement in this competition was to kind of help set up some of the cloud infrastructure uh, and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, of course, the mother to <laughs> all of the students, Sherry, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Dan. Um, so I'm Sherry Chang. Um, this is my second year um, helping out as a mentor for this uh, NASA module of the competition. And uh, I, um, I, I started with uh, uh, thinking of the problems that we wanted for this year and discussing with some of my colleagues, trying to figure out what would be the best approach. Um, so the final method and the problems that we set up. I'm very pleased with, with what we did and uh, what the students were able to do. So, I am really pleased at how you put this, this together. And let me just tell the audience, they did WARF, which is weather forecasting. But can you tell us a little bit about the, how you step the students through what is a pretty complex application? Yes, so uh, WOLF is a weather modeling um, application. It's open source, and we wanted to use an open source because uh, we, we, we're not supposed to use any proprietary or yeah. in-house application. And um, when we were approaching uh, this problem, um, we know that this application is uh, very widely used, so a lot of people have the experience. However, when they are... Um, trying to port the application to a new platform, there's a process that the, all scientists have to go through. They have to work on um, figuring out the, the dependency because WRF uh, depends on a lot of different software packages. And then they have to work on building the software packages, uh, building WRF and, and then running it and trying to get the best performance and um, maybe understanding what the application is doing, pro profiling it. And so uh, mm -hmm. we decided to uh, create this uh, problem with multiple components and not judging the students solely based on the best performance. Um, it, it makes more sense to us that uh, uh, the students should learn how to do the whole process. And we want to judge them by the whole process, not just based on the final uh, performance of the, the run that they did. And I by doing totally that, I think agree. It, it makes more sense for them to learn. I couldn't agree more. In fact, sort of the way you have it broken down is that uh, they can get 30 points out of 100 just for building it successfully, right? Um, it's 40 points. Oh, is it? 20, oh, you're right. That is 40 points. Yes. 20, 20 points for building NetCDF and 20 points for building WRF. Yes. yes. So they get 40 points if, if they are able to uh, follow instructions or seek help. I mean, we don't mind them asking for help. And in my mind, uh, the, the whole point of the competition is not just about get, being the number one, but about learning about HPC. And if they are not able to 
figure out how to uh, build the packages, um, we are here to help them. And I was really happy that uh, some of the students, they were struggling and they asked for help and we provide the one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, team meetings with them. And so I'm glad that they actually, they are willing to approach us to ask for one-on-one -on -one help. That is great. And uh, 11 out of 12 teams managed to uh, get some points in on this. Yes. Which is very good. And that says a lot about the quality of your mentoring. <laughs> well, we tried and uh, the outcome seems uh, pleasing. So that's good. Well, well, now here's something too. You had them do a uh, G-Prof on it. Right. Yes. Um, well, part of it is that uh, um, we would like them to go beyond just getting uh, some runs done and mm -hmm. um, learning how to profile an application may be important in the future if they want to approach other applications. Absolutely. And G, yeah. And GProb is the, the, uh, the Linux tool that's available um, anywhere. I mean, if you have a Linux um, uh, OS installed on your system, you should be able to get GProp. So it's a universal tool. And therefore, it makes sense to have them at least try out uh, GProp to do profiling. And I'll bet that was an eye opener for some of the students because the I, I talked about this in a couple of the interviews. They hadn't really they weren't aware that there were tools out there that would characterize your application. Right. <laughs> so there are more advanced tools like uh, Intel VTune and there are other tools uh, with from different vendors. But those sometimes you have to uh, get a license or yeah. it's harder to get universally. So but GProf, you can get it on any Linux distribution. And then you also made them do a quiz. Right. <laughs> and what you ask in the quiz? Um, we have 10 questions, um, and the, the, some of the 10 questions are um, things that they, they, I mean, we did not teach them everything mm -hmm. that are covered in the quiz. Uh, some of the, the thought is that uh, we mentioned things in the instructions, and we uh, encouraged them to, um, to do their own research on things that we mentioned. And so in the quiz questions, we have uh, things like, uh, uh, what is the, the version of the Linux uh, kernel uh, on the cluster? So they have to learn how to use, say, uname-r in order to figure out what's the uh, version of the kernel. And then we ask them about questions such as, uh, why is there a dot slash in front of configure, but not when you do make? What's the reason for that? Ah. So things like that, they have to have yeah. some, some kind of understanding um, of Linux environment. And then there are questions about NetCDF, uh, the static library, dynamic mm -hmm. library, which one are you really using? Uh, are you really using the NetCDF Fortran library in this, uh, uh, for this problem? And then there are questions such as, um, do you see you don't really see 2x speed up when you multiply the number of uh, CPUs um, and why, what will be some of the, the reasons for that. And so um, the last question, mm -hmm. the last question I have, it was uh, actually a fun question that I thought would be interesting to put in, which is to ask them um, for the, for the uh, input data for the issue, uh, the the problem we asked them to do, which is EM tropical cyclone, I asked them, where are the, the initial data from? And so it was funny that uh, a student uh, sent a message asking, are we tricking them? Because the, <laughs> the, the problem we asked them to do is an idealized uh, condition. And they were, he was probably thinking they idealized there shouldn't be any real, real preparation involved. But in fact, there is because the the idealized uh, test case was uh, was assembled by the developer, I assume, um, from some kind of uh, data um, gathered. At least by some, some real world data somewhere, yeah. By, yeah, by some researchers in 1958, I think. Oh, so wow. There has to be, okay. There's, there has to be some record somewhere, and I wanted them to show. Go that, find it. 
Yeah, instead of just uh, working on the problem, getting a number, do you really have the interest in doing research and knowing where things are? Uh, so, I mean, it's just something that I like to see if, if they have the, the, the desire to go beyond what we ask them for. Very good. And it's such a, a great design. Uh, Steve and Andy, uh, tell us a little bit about the environment they were using. Yeah, sure. I could speak to that. So we set up 12 individual clusters on Amazon Web Services. Uh, it was using uh, Slurm, you know, scheduler, workload manager. So it kind of has like similar look and feel to a lot of HPC systems that you would find at the other, you know, federal facilities and things like that. Um, you know, mixed architecture. So like Skylakes, Rome, Haswell, I think was there another one? Cherry, I can't remember. Um, you know, and the, and the nodes had various, you know, networking speeds and things like that. So it gave the students kind of an opportunity to, to test the different things and look at the performance implications and stuff. Um, but in a nutshell, that's, that's it. And then Linux system, uh, CentOS based, um, you know, standard compiler. Kind of basic. Like that. Yeah. 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 And uh, did they, were they running an awful lot of test jobs and things? Did they get, an early start and go to town on it or uh, a late start and Sherry, was pretty, catch up. Sherry was pretty strict about access um, when, when they could gain access and when, when things were Sherry off. is nothing so, if not yes, strict. Yes. So uh, <laughs> the window of opportunity was, you know, roughly one week. And, and, and so they yep. all tests were done. There. I thought I saw some procrastination there towards the end where people were kind of, you know, trying to finish things up right up to the deadline. But by and large, it looked like everyone was, you know, using the system. And, and uh, Oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Now, you have another metric that went into the total score, and that's their price performance. Right. So, uh, so the year before, we, we used the MPB, uh, mm -hmm. MZ benchmarks, and uh, uh, in the instruction, we gave them um, different different um, dimensions where they can do optimization and to get the best performance. So for example, uh, do you want to turn on hyperthreading? Do you want to do pinning? You want to try different configuration of the MPI OpenMP? And so we have already given them all the clues uh, last year. And so, so after they uh, successfully built uh, MPB, all they need to do is try to explore the different space. Mm -hmm. And so the outcome is that uh, some teams, they were very, very aggressive in um, uh, trying all kinds of possibilities and trying different parameter sweep. And so some teams they did better. Part of it is because of the the, the running a lot of different runs. But I was concerned that uh, they were just focusing on getting the, the best number instead of mm. trying to learn the best about the different uh, space of the optimization skills. And so for this one, we really didn't want them to focus on a single number, the best performers. And uh, the, the thinking is that when you go to a, um, an application, you want to run tons of uh, similar runs um, you really want to optimize the the amount of uh, say budget that you have. Sure. Instead of optimizing on a single run, you want to optimize for the best price for performance. And with best price price performance, it doesn't necessarily mean the run that uh, gives you the shortest war time will That's be right. the, the best one you want. You want sometimes it may be a different run that takes a little bit longer but using a fewer, fewer number of CPUs that may actually give you the best, best um, Most efficiency. Performance. Right, yeah, so that's what we decided to do. And it looks like there was a wide range in price performance from uh, 27 cents all the way up to more than a dollar for whatever that's metric you're using there. Is that per run or is that per minute or? Um, that is, that is uh, just from, one run. So okay. some students, they may have run, for example, the the team that did the best, they they, they ran more than 300 jobs. Oh, wow. Uh, and then they um, submitted the one that gave the best price performance of uh, about 27 cents for that <laughs> run. Um, and some other teams, they may have done only 15 runs or ah. 50 runs, right? And they picked the best from what they could uh, could get. 
So the number uh, shown in the table is from a single run. Very nice. Very nice. This was a great challenge. This really worked out well. Welcome. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you so much. And I know the students have learned a lot from it. I've been talking to some of the teams and uh, this is a real eye opener. <laughs> and it, well, hopefully it'll bring some more of them into HPC. We are seeing some students that uh, didn't know HPC was a thing and they're now attracted to it as a career. And it's stuff like this that helps to do it. And the, yeah. the, the gentle but firm touch that mm -hmm. NASA applies to uh, walk them through this, this problem. So thank you so much. And uh, it's always great working with you folks. And it uh, was great yet again. You topped yourself from last year. <laughs> thank you for saying that. <laughs> You absolutely did. Steve, you have anything to say? I do not. I, I am glad there are young, <laughs> interested people in HPC because you might notice we're getting old. We need a new generation to take over. We need to be replaced. Yeah. Not yes, quite yet, but soon. I'm ready to retire. Okay. So somebody get in here and replace Steve. Somebody tag yes, him please. out. Yes. No, we need Steve. Steve is a wonderful resource. I mean, he has... Uh, expertise not just in the app team the application team and also a lot of experience with uh, the cloud he is actually the pioneer in our whole ah. division to uh, work on cloud uh, infrastructure building up our uh, cloud offering so okay we're really great to have uh, steve uh, doing work in the cloud area so let's give Steve an assistant then, someone to <laughs> learn from everything that Steve knows before he does finally retire. That would be let's good, do, yes. Let's aim for that. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And again, thanks for mentoring this application. You really did a good job. Thank you. Thank you very well. You're welcome.